Welcome to Tizi This Week. I'm Helen Liu. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in today's show, Japan Tizi volunteers and local residents are working hard to prepare for the 311th Earthquake Photography Exhibition. In Malaysia, Tizi volunteers are holding a charity sale to fundraise for the construction of a new Jingzi Hall in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor. And we look at the story of Singapore volunteer Li Defu and see how Tzuji is changing his life in a positive way. At the beginning of our show, we go to Asia, where it has been a year and a half since the 311th earthquake devastated Japan. To continue their love and care for the local residents of Miyagi Prefecture, Tsuji volunteers are holding a three-day exhibition from September 21st until the 23rd in the city of Higashi Matsushima and Takajo. Other than the exhibition, the volunteers will also be showing the animated film of Venerable Jianzhen. Tsuji volunteers hope to spread Buddhist Dharma and inspire more local residents to join their ranks. Inside the Tsuji Japan chapter, although it is late at night, volunteers and local residents are still preparing for the 311th Earthquake Photography Exhibition that will be held in the city of Higashi Matsushima and Takajo. We divided into teams and made sure the stories behind each photo were very clear. This time we hope to introduce Tsuji to even more people and cultivate more volunteers. This is our biggest hope. To prepare for the 311th Earthquake Photography Exhibition, other than Japanese Tsuji volunteers, local residents also help out with sorting pictures and the making of guidebooks. I haven't been cooking at home since September 3rd. I told my husband that I will be volunteering. Everyone is like this, not only me. We stay late every day. Upon arriving at the Tsuji Japan chapter, media volunteers from Taiwan quickly take out their cameras to capture every moment of the hard-working volunteers. I was touched when I saw so many people helping out. Yes. To ensure a successful exhibition, many staff at the Tsuji Japan chapter haven't gone home in days. However, no one complains. The volunteers hope through the exhibition and the animated film Venerable Jianzhen, they can spread Tsuji further into Japan and cultivate more local bodhisattvas. In China's Fujian province, Tsuji volunteers recently established a new Tsuji chapter in the city of Xiamen. The new chapter is approximately 9,900 square meters and is being provided by the Xiamen government free of charge. Meanwhile, on September 15th, the new chapter held the closing ceremony for Tsuji's most recent volunteer training seminar. The closing ceremony of Tsuji's volunteer training seminar in Xiamen is taking place at the newly established Tsuji chapter of Xiamen. The location has been provided by the Xiamen government free of charge. For the past 10 years, Tsuji has done a lot of good works in Xiamen, such as winter aid distributions, scholarship aid, medical volunteer training seminars, teachers' workshops, and much more. These events have earned Tsuji recognition from the local government. Other than earning recognition from the local government, some volunteers even found their soulmate after joining Tsuji. A couple decided to attend their certification ceremony in Taiwan as part of their honeymoon. I am very grateful for Tsuji for giving me the chance to meet a husband that will be walking on the Bodhisattva path with me. Sometimes I get tired when doing too much Tsuji work. However, seeing the hard work my wife put in, it reminds me to never give up and so I will keep on going. Before the opening of the new Tsuji chapter, more than 300 volunteers joined in the cleanup. I think after my daughter joined Tsuji, she learned a lot because she saw that there are a lot of people that are less fortunate than her. She cherishes every opportunity to learn. Tai Lingying, a volunteer from Quanzhou City, wipes the windows and door frames attentively. She said Tsuji volunteers have put a lot of effort in this area. 
I am very happy, so I came to volunteer. Our new home is so big, and in the future, we can cultivate more bodhisattvas. I am so happy. In the kitchen, volunteers are busy preparing lunch boxes for the cleaning volunteers. Caring for each other just like family, the volunteers promise to work together to bring warmth to this new home. In the Philippines, Tsuji volunteers have been training local volunteers for many years to promote Tsuji's ideals. Their efforts have recently paid off as residents in Barangay Obalara of Quezon City have started to sort recyclables as a way to thank the volunteers. Recently, Tsuji volunteers awarded 39 residents with volunteer uniforms and hope that they can continue to spread the seeds of love. On the day of the weekly recycling event, local residents of Gensong City gather in the stadium of Old Balara Elementary School to show recyclables. <laughs> Today as well, a volunteer certification ceremony is to be held. There are too many poor families in this area. It is almost impossible to rely on only a few volunteers like us to take care of them. With the help of newly certified volunteers, we can help even more people. The livelihood of poor families in Barangay Obalara has been affected by a road expansion project ongoing since 2010. After Siji volunteers conducted relief distributions in the area, they also set up a recycling station at an elementary school. One of the school's teachers has become an avid promoter of recycling activities. In our planet, there are alarming changes that are bringing disasters. Siji teaches us to save and protect our planet. It makes me proud to put on this uniform. Ms. Lerma is an elementary school teacher. She has instilled Siji's eco-friendly ideas into her teaching and gradually attracted parents to join in recycling activities. Every week, there's only one recycling activity. I just need to make time on Saturday to participate in recycling. That way, I can balance family and recycling work. Like a ripple effect, more and more residents have been taking part in the recycling activities over the past two years. It not only provides an occasion for neighbors to socialize, but also has changed some people's lives. After joining the recycling work, I have quit smoking and stopped drinking alcohol. Therefore, I decided to follow the Tsuji path to help people. Putting on the volunteer's grey uniform, the newly certified recycling volunteers will not only become a part of the Tsuji family, but also bodhisattvas bringing hope to dark corners of society. In Malaysia, Tsuji volunteers in Klang held a charity sale to fundraise for the construction of a new Jingzi Hall in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor. The charity sale had 64 booths and sold various products and foods. Both the volunteers and the residents joined together to make a contribution for the new Jingzi Hall. <laughs> The volunteers are trying their best to sell their charity items to fundraise for a new Jin Si Ho in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor. Many people arrive eager to help. The charity sale demonstrates the diversity of ethnicities in Malaysia. A Dharma master also feels Tsuji's unity. It's unity. Everyone, young or old, is working together to achieve a common goal and to give their selfless love. Zhuang Li Jun, who is a volunteer from Johor, drove four hours to participate. She even invited her co-workers to draw sketches to sell at the event. It's a good thing for my co-workers to come here and expand their field. Instead of just teaching drawing in classrooms, here they can meet new people. It's like a field trip. I used to think that sketching was just an interest. I didn't think it was applicable in charity as well. 
vegetarian restaurant owner Xie Danping closed her restaurant for the day to participate in the event. I can always make money, so I want to do as much volunteer work as I can when I am still young. A care recipient, Vitayrani, who once suffered from disease and food shortages, understands the importance of giving, so she joined the charity sale to reciprocate. I learned from Sichi. So, I mean, they helped me. Why not I do some charity? That's all. The six-hour charity sale represents the devotion of the volunteers and residents to the construction of a new Jinsu Hall. Recently, Brazil City Volunteers held a free clinic and aid distribution in the municipality of São Bernardo do Combo. As this was the second free clinic held in the area, the number of people waiting to see the doctors doubled. To ensure all patients receive treatment, team of doctors and volunteers sacrificed their lunch time to serve more patients. As the volunteers' car stops by the gate of the nursing home, the seniors approach to greet them. Every month, city volunteers in Brazil pay a visit to remote areas and bring care and happiness to the elderly. <laughs> the volunteers also visit a local volunteer's house in Kokaya to give Gisele's mother a bedpan chair and also bring the family support. <laughs> Take care, take care. We are here to visit you. You have to recover soon so we can do volunteer work together. As the weather in Brazil is getting warmer, city volunteers take this chance to hold a second free clinic in São Bernardo do Cambo. Many people wait in line for the doctors and in face of the overwhelming number of patients, medical staff postpone their lunch time. This was the first time I have seen so many patients. Many of them suffer from gynecological diseases. It is hard to imagine. This is my first time being a volunteer and I'm very touched. Another group of volunteers also visited care recipients living in this area. When Selma sees the volunteers coming, she hurries to seek help. My granddaughter got into a car accident and the surgical plate in her leg started to show post-surgical rejection. Her leg has started to separate, so I'm afraid she may lose her leg. Soon after Selma discussed her difficulty, the volunteers promised to help and also gave her a warm hug. I'm so touched for your help, as this is the second time you have helped me. You always provide timely help. Thank you. The free clinic provided seven types of medical services. Volunteers also helped prescribe glasses and test blood sugar to alleviate the residents' health concerns. The Taichung Ciji Hospital Traditional Chinese Medicine Department is celebrating its fifth year anniversary. To mark the occasion, doctors and staff visited a care recipient living in the Taiping district to offer a checkup and lend a hand in cleaning up his house. Here in Taiwan, this living room is so full of garbage that volunteers have trouble finding a place to stand. Every room is like this. I said I wanted to clean up, but she wouldn't let me. Garbage is everywhere, blocking exits and entrance alike. We need a truck for removal of all of this. As volunteers start to clean up, they disturb the homes of spiders, cockroaches and even rats. The spiders will run up our bodies. We just need to move faster as they are all hiding in the boxes. It is a jumble of things, some of which maybe have been here for over 10 or 20 years. The problem was that they were not able to clean this up by themselves. The owner of the house says times have been hard. My mother passed away and my father is in prison now. We just couldn't bear throwing any of this stuff away. In a family afflicted by misfortune, the mother has passed on, the father is in jail, and the two children are slightly mentally challenged. For the children, long years of living next to garbage has led to skin problems. She has ulcers on her feet and a lot of rashes. 
So we are first going to clean their living environment, and then we will give her some medicine to apply. This is how doctors and supervisors at the Taichung Cixi Hospital are celebrating the five-year anniversary of the hospital's TCM clinic. I think today can help our co-workers better understand the Bodhisattva path. With the hospital superintendent at the head, the volunteers line up to carry out almost 30 years of garbage to the waiting trucks. Today we are not only cleaning up the garbage we see before us, but also the garbage and the impurities that are carried in the heart. Cleaned, the house sparkles like new. Its owner, Miss Lau, is overjoyed. Now that it is clean, it is a lot more comfortable. It makes me happy to see that. Yeah. The tears that flow are tears of gratitude for the selfless services that Cixi doctors and volunteers have shown here today. In our next report, we'll look at the story of Singapore volunteer Li De Fu, who mixed with the wrong group when he was young. Just as his family was about to give up on him, a trip to Taiwan changed his life. When he was traveling in Taiwan, he happened to turn on Dai TV. The story of a depraved person turning good inspired him to change. Before, our friends and I would do drugs every night, and soon we were addicted. When 52-year-old Li De Fu was young, he indulged in drugs, gambling and drinking. He would even hit his wife. One day he beat me, so I slept in the living room. Then he followed me into the living room and kept beating me. But I had to endure it because I could not give up on my family. Because of his violent temper, no one in his family would dare to upset Li. Also, his gambling debts caused him to avoid any type of family gatherings. He didn't show up for the anniversary of our mother's death. I kept asking my sister-in-law why my brother didn't come. Last December, Li De Fu and his family traveled to Taiwan. While in his hotel room, he happened to watch a program on Dai TV describing how a Ciji volunteer started afresh. It was a message that resonated with him. So the volunteer story is like my life. And then I started watching Master Zheng Yan's teachings and decided to start afresh as well. I'd ask him to come to do recycling on the second Sunday of every month, and he really did. Everyone here is so devoted and I wanted to be like them. It's nice to sort these recyclables. Everyone should play his or her part to save the planet. Li De Fu never imagined that he would have a chance to do something for the society. Master Zheng Yan always encourages us to seize the day. I am now 52 years old. It may be too late for me, but I want to seize every opportunity to make more contributions. Three-year-old Ifa Nuru from Malaysia, Sapa, suffers from epilepsy and blood infection and needs a five-minute dialysis treatment five times a day. However, the family does not have the means to install clean running water at home. Their doctors therefore contacted Ciji, who arrived to lend their helping hand. In Malaysia, three-year-old Ifa Nuru cries as her mother, Misa, administers kidney dialysis while a Ciji volunteer tries to comfort the little girl. This five-minute procedure takes place five times a day and is torture for both mother and child. First, when the epilepsy appeared, we went to the doctors and they said the children would need dialysis because her blood is infected and also shown a high urine protein count, so we had no choice but to give her dialysis to save her life. Living on the outskirts of Sabah in western Beaufort, transportation is a financial burden for Misa's family. So at-home peritoneal dialysis was their best option. The doctors say peritoneal dialysis needs a sterile environment and ask if we had running water at home. So I told him the truth and that was we used well water. The husband's fishing income covers medical expenses, but not much else is left 
to pay for the installation of running water at home. The hospital contacted Siji for help. This is our uniform. No matter where on earth, our uniforms are the same. After receiving a call from Laika's hospital, Siji volunteers drove two hours from Kota Kinabalu to Western Beaufort to assist in applying for the installation of running water. This well water is actually just a hole in the ground. It's mostly used for toilet water. They still have to go into the city to buy water and pay for bringing it back. To ask our relatives for assistance is difficult, as their financial situation is same as ours. So we are really grateful for Tsuji for helping out our family, especially Yifa. In providing running water for Ifa, the volunteers also promised to stay by her side and help her overcome her illness. In Sabah, Malaysia, to help patients suffer some thalassemia, Kota Kinabalu Tsuji volunteers hold a blood drive every three months. At the event, there are always donors who regularly come to donate, or even those who were denied in the past, but still come to the event hoping maybe this time they qualify. Here in Malaysia, Kota Kinabalu Tsuji volunteers hold a blood drive every three months. Although some donors may not qualify to donate, they still come to the event with a hopeful heart. I have been denied three times. I'm not asking for anything in return. I just want to do good deeds. 52-year-old Ling Qingquan has high blood pressure, so he has difficulty in donating blood, but he awaits patiently for his chance. Huang Hui Zhen also has difficulties in donating, but on this day, she finally qualified and it means so much to her. The staff said I was not qualified to donate blood because I only have enough blood for myself, so I'm very happy that I'm able to donate my blood today to help others. Uh, as you know, uh, in Malaysia registry for thalassemia, there is about 5,000 uh, plus patients registered. Out of that, 2,500 are from Sabah alone. But once uh, a patient is diagnosed with thalassemia, uh, the primary uh, treatment for thalassemia is uh, blood. Uh, is blood. Then that is why eh, we are really hoping that people would come and volunteer. And the safest donor are the one who regular, uh, who donate regularly. Tsuji in Kota Kinabalu has been holding blood drives for 14 years and has long partnered with Laika's hospital as blood donations save lives. We stay in Malaysia at the end of our show, where Tsuji Academy in Kadet will be adding the learning of the sign language musical of the Water Repentance Sutra as part of their course for the new semester. The musical will then later be performed on the semester end ceremony. Meanwhile, the volunteers also seize the opportunity to encourage students to adopt a vegetarian diet. That's all the time we are for. Have a good weekend. Goodbye.